Hello everyone, this is Christina with Kilburn's Creations. I am working with Palmer Clay again today. Let's get down here. And you guys probably, on my last Palmer Clay one I did, I made these. Come on, focus for me. There we go, that's better. And, uh, made out of these with different colored centers. These ones I didn't actually make. These are the ones that I bought and I copied them. So now I'm wanting to make round, full round balls. So it'd be like two of these back to back to each other. So I've started making my flowers. To give you an idea, I got half of this one done and coated. Can you see the yeah, you can see some glitter there. Sparkles. Oh, I still have the other side to do, but anyways, I wanted to show you guys what I was doing hot like that. Now these ones here that I am making, these are the roses I'm making for these balls. This is the rose that I use to make the half ones. You can see I'm working with a lot smaller flower, which is a little int uh, frustrating sometimes. And I wanted to show you the different. Okay, where did my other one go? Okay, yeah. On the first ones I did, this is the one that I used. This is the one I used on these other ones. So there is a big difference in the size of the flower. And then they have a smaller one of these teardrop ones. Come on, focus. Teardrop ones. Um, I've got these offline the teardrop ones, I still had her card in the low bag, or their card, so if you want to go check them out, they are, do have an Etsy channel. So, but a lot of my better cutters that I have received, I got off Etsy. But back then when I was buying them all, I wasn't really keeping track of who what I bought from who. So. Anyways, you'll probably remember this part here. This is where I flattened the clay out and made all my little and we put them down here on the This is the uh, fun foam that they do a lot of craft things with for kids. And then again, I took the foam, put one on top, and then I rolled it to flatten them out some more. And turned it and rolled it again. I'm hoping to get this done in less than 45 minutes. So if I go over, I'm sorry, it's going to end up being a two-parter. Uh, we picked it up. Let's see here. Let me stand up. Get closer here. I need more light over here too. Okay, so you see I've got it cupped a little bit. I'm going to bend it over here and just gently roll. Gently roll like that. And then you're going to want this part right here facing this way. going to pick up another petal 
and lay it right there in front. Oops. And the idea is to keep these petals here even. So you roll it a little bit. next to it don't forget to bend the edges a little bit to look like it's an open petal to do them in eight petals or less so and this one will go up just a little bit Push it down that corner, try to pinch it and curl it upward. And then this one will be the last one for this one. Right about there, and then we just roll it. Then we want to go back and just kind of pull the petals down a little bit. Make it look like it's opening. I'm sorry. Well, that's not one of my better ones, but let's see. I should be able to get another one here. Get down. Where's my point thing at? Right there. See right here needs another petal. So put it there, stick it into the bottom, cup it, and there's somewhat of a decent rose. So they're a little more tedious, so they're a little bit more um, harder to hold on to, um, especially when these three fingers like to go numb all the time. And then after that, I've been using head pen glass head pens, sewing pens to make clothes with. I found out the plastic ones will melt. So I use the oh, let me redo that. So we put this into the middle like so, push it all the way through gently until it comes out to the bottom. And then we're gonna push it into a dried out sponge. These will not hurt get hurt in the oven at all. No big no problems at all. You can cook it in the oven. So after I got done doing all of these, which I still need to do more white, but let's get you focused down here now. The next thing I did was I grabbed some clay And then these are ball makers, bead makers. These make round balls like this one right here. Okay, this one here is a 13 millimeter one. And what you do is you fill this little canal here up, push it in, and then take your blade and very gently cut the top off. 
just like that. And then you take an object and dig that out, just like that. Uh-oh, I don't think that was completely full. Nope, that had an air bubble in it. Now we're going to make it extra soft. Okay, create it back into the little bead thing here. Push it down. Take your blade, slice the top off. And dig it out. And then you're going to roll it into a ball. And then these things here slide together. You put your bead right there. Then you start your other halfway over, push away. And you just go back and forth. So you end up with a bead like that. And then I set those to the side. Now these here will get baked first. Okay? So these ones here has already been baked. So after you get the Oh, and these come in three different sizes. They get exchanged like this. I got it at Joann's, if anybody's interested. I was there the other day to get some different ones and they didn't have the other ones, they still had those. So so then after that, we are gonna take some of your liquid Sculpey and put it so much on. We're gonna take one of your beads and we're gonna do every other flower. I'm gonna do a pink one this time. So you take the flower, pull out your pen, you dip it into the sculpture liquid clay, and just push it in. Now your bead will distort a little bit. It's okay. By the time you get done, you aren't going to notice it. And then I just do every other one. Go all the way around. Like so. Let's see here. Let's get a few of these looser, quicker. Now I need a pink. And see how that has like a nice little point on it? Don't worry about it. Just dip it in your sculpty clay, find its spot, and push it in. Okay, 
so you got it all the way around. Now what you're going to do is you're going to put the pink one right here. At least that's what I've been doing since I've been running out of white. And a pink one here on the other side. And then you just fill around it. That one's not quite centered, so let's go over here more. And then you're going to do the same thing around the center of that one and around the center of that one. And you'll end up coming out with something like this. Now this one I started. This has not been cooked since I put it into the ball and to be secure them with the sculpty clay. Now what you want to do is take your, let's see, this one here, I used the 16 millimeter bead instead of the 13 and um, the leaves I used the same size that I used to make the petals and I laid it down and it flattened some of the petals like this. So we aren't going to do that when we put the leaves on. We make a little tripod and we stick a pin there. You just want to make a small triangle. Maybe put that one there. And put this one over here. So that way when you lay it down, you need to be over here more. There you go. That way your leaves have place, places to go and it won't get smushed. And then when you get your leaves all in place like that, you just set it on your pan and put it in the oven and cook it to the recommended temperature and time. Uh, I wanted to show you how I was doing these two. Now this part was really tricky because you gotta hold the trees and you can't feel them if you've got anything or not. Too tight they make come out looking funny. that one right there like that. Now on some of them you can also use the pen. It is not as easy as the tweezers are. And then also with some of these holes too, like this one right here, it's got a pretty good gap in there. Let's squirt some more in there. Use my tweezers. I like my tweezers better. So if you have the liquid sculpey in there already, you don't have to dip it. You just gotta place it where you want it to be. And you don't need a whole lot of them, just enough to dress the ball up. the 
this one here. And this one has some sculpture clay in it, or liquid sculpture already in there. So you just want to get it in there and push it into that sculpture clay. And if you bend your tips, tops of your leaves and stuff, it's not no big deal. It's still going to look nice. That was pretty tight in there, didn't I? Oh, I want some green right in there. better. So when you get that all done, I can use some down here by this pen. You have this here. This side is not finished. So then what I did after that, uh, make sure you're focused here. After that, I took some of the Lisa Pavep. I'm really bad at names, but I love this product. I took a brush and I painted some on, and then I took some fine white glitter and sprinkled it on, and then I got this iridescent. <sighs> Looking. So you want to do both sides of that. I paint it on, paint it on with a brush. Make sure you have it in a separate container though. Pour a little bit out. The light hits it, the stuff turns hard within 15 minutes. So I painted it on, I did a little sprinkle with the glitter, and then I set it outside in the sun for about 20 minutes. That's only because I went down to the, get a cappuccino from the gas station and came back, and this is what I had. You can barely see the glitter compared to this side. So, so anyways, that's how I'm making these beads here. I thought you guys would want to know. Because when I start using them in a the project, you're going to ask me where I get those beads. So, this is going into another project. I am working on a project a little bit at a time, though. Instead of having everything out, I'm doing sections at a time. So if you have any questions, you can email me or leave messages down below. Don't forget to subscribe and push the like button. And I'm doing another bead after I get these done, too. So I will be back with another Palmer Clay bead. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.